Hello everyone, welcome to Inside Xbox. We've got a great show for you today, packed with announcements, assassins, vampires, death himself, and bears, oh my. We've even got some very special info about Project xCloud. What is it? Where is it? I'll do you one better. Why is it? And most importantly, when can you try it out for yourself? All these answers and much more await you on this episode of Inside Xbox, starting right now. Hello everyone and welcome to Inside Xbox. We've got a huge show for you today, including a ton of great games coming very soon and the latest from Project xCloud. Too true, Lawyer Bear. Whether you're into pillaging on the high seas in Atlas, challenging Satan to a drink off for your very soul in After Party, or finding your fortune in a capitalist space dystopia in the outer world, we've got games for everyone today. Everyone except for those who like to play games with our heart. Ah, oh, see, no singing, no singing, because then we'd have to teach Larry to dance, and nobody wants to see that. Fair point. Let's instead talk about another group of folks that tend to sing and dance a lot, pirates. Yeah, brilliant segue there, Kate. Thank you very much. Anyway, the game is called Atlas. It is a persistent open world pirate sandbox game that will challenge you to swashbuckle with the best of them. And it's coming to Xbox very, very soon. We're about to talk with Atlas's lead game designer, but first, we'll give you a head start on getting your sea legs with a new trailer for the game right now.
October 8th, I had just enough time to get my eye patch tailored. And uh, wait, a pirate game on Xbox? Haven't we seen that before? All right, let's address the peg-legged elephant in the room. Yes, Sea of Thieves exists. It's awesome. But Atlas is really a very different type of experience. They're basically on opposite ends of the pirate spectrum, which is something that exists now. Basically, you have Jack Sparrow on this end of the spectrum, and on the other side is uh, Captain Phillips. Look at me. I'm the captain now. You remember that? Yeah. Maybe you don't. I might to have chosen help. Kermit. As, yeah. <laughs> to help us understand this more intense flavor of pirating lifestyle, we have Atlas lead game designer Eric Wannanen to tell us, well, all about Atlas. So, Eric, tell us all about Atlas. Sure, yeah. So, obviously, yeah, there are a lot of pirate offerings now. Um, there are a lot of things that differentiate us from, you know, other pirate games, though. Um, you know, we want to create the ultimate pirate experience. And so, Atlas is an online multiplayer survival pirate game. You know, it's, it's a massive open world that thousands of players can connect to simultaneously. One of the coolest things that differentiates us, though, in the pirate space is that we actually provide a truly persistent world. So, if I build a ship or a base in one place and you visit that location, you'll actually be able to see exactly what I've built and you can interact with it too. You know, we've created this gigantic sandbox where we let players do pretty much whatever we want. We've given them the tools and freedom to do that in true pirate fashion. So, you know, if you're a player that wants to get all your friends together and create a fleet of pirate ships to then terrorize the seas, you can do that. If you want to claim an island and then build your own pirate hideout, you can also do that. Uh, you know, the, the world is truly your oyster when it comes to Atlas. Very good. I, I like the nautical theme there. I can't stop making those, those <laughs> little things, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you, you talked about sort of the scale of what you can do, but when, you, when you're talking about a pirate game, there's certain things that you really expect. You want to battle sea creatures. You're going to want to pillage ships. You're going to want to lose all of your teeth because you don't have a, a fundamental knowledge of nutrition. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Did so, we ever do these things? Yeah, there's there's all those offerings and more, right? Including the the vitamin stuff and the the scurvy and whatnot. But you know, there's a lot of those classic moments that players are expecting too. Uh, Atlas at its core is a game about exploring, surviving, conquering the world with your friends and other pirates. But there's also those very iconic pirate moments: intense ship battles with cannons, um, you know, storming decks and clashing swords with other players, searching for buried treasure and wrestling it away from people that don't want to part with their booty. Um, even building your own bases and defending them or raiding and looting other player bases, you know? That's just a handful of items that are those really classic pirate moments that players are expecting that are in Atlas. And there's a lot more that players can expect when they get into the game and actually play. So Atlas is freedom. It's not just what you can do in the game, but it's really how you can experience the game. There's a lot of options to how you can really interact with the world of Atlas. Right, yeah, it's, it's a very player goal-driven game, right? And so players set what they want to do and the stories that they want to tell in the game, and we give them the, the, the space and the tools to provide those stories for them to create, yeah. All right, so let's talk about day one, you're launching into Xbox Game Preview. That's right. All right, so that means that's the beginning of this, this voyage for Atlas on Xbox. Exactly. What can, what can players expect on that first day? Right, so again, uh, you know, we are looking to get into uh, releasing on Xbox Game Preview on October 8th, so it's two weeks away. Um, you know, one of the things that we're really excited about is uh, crossplay support. So we're actually going to be having Atlas be crossplay enabled for both Xbox and PC on day one at launch. So players on both platforms will be able to play together in the exact same worlds on all of our official servers. Something else that we're working on is keyboard and mouse support for Xbox, so players can look forward to that. But the one thing we actually really wanted to make sure Xbox players understand is that when we launch um, Atlas on Xbox, it's actually going to have full game parity with Xbox and PC. That means that whenever we push an update or we release new content for the game, Xbox and PC will both get that simultaneously. It's not a different game for Xbox or a different game for PC. It's the exact same game across both platforms. You're saying a lot of the right things here. <laughs> so uh, let's 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 take out our our, our spyglass and look sure. a little bit you know forward down the line of the game preview voyage for Atlas. Uh, I'm thinking back to you guys made Ark Survival Evolved. Mm -hmm. And I had a really wild run through early access. I remember playing it on its first week out, and I think I was like bashing a fish with a rock <laughs> and then eating it raw, right. like, like a proper cave, cave person. Mm -hmm. uh, six months later, I saw people flying on the backs of pterodactyls firing SMGs, and I was like, how is this the same game? Sure, lots of changes over time, right? Exactly, so why don't you talk a little bit about some of the changes we can expect down the line with Atlas? Sure, so we're looking to follow a very similar approach with Atlas, right? Um, evolution over time, especially in game preview. Um, so basically, how we're gonna treat future updates for Atlas, we're gonna be rolling them out in sort of multiple phases, and so each phase will have sort of a specific area of the game that we focus on and that we tailor or make improvements to. For example, the first 
first update that we're going to be really focusing on once we release on the 8th is going to be sort of general upkeep stuff, quality of life improvements for the game, bug fixes, performance increases, those sorts of areas. But then after that, the, fo the area of focus we're going to have is that, uh, the phase on seas, ships, and sailing updates. Ships and sailing are such an important part of Atlas. You know, it's really core to that pirate fantasy. And so we want to make them an even bigger part of the game than they currently are. So that means things like making ships easier to acquire and easier to sail, um, new additional types of encounters on the ocean, new activities for players to do on their ships. You know, we want players to be able to enjoy themselves even more when they're out on their ships. So we're going to be focusing on updates that target those areas specifically. But the most important part of all this, honestly, especially in Game Preview, is going to be player feedback, right? So it's a continually evolving process. We want to get player input. And so we want to invite and encourage Xbox players to join us both in our official forums and on social media so they can also be a part of helping make Atlas that ultimate pirate experience together. All right, what is that website? What is that social <laughs> media? Where can people find more about Atlas? Sure, so you can visit us on our official website at playatlas.com. We have an official Discord channel that players can join. They can chat in us. Sometimes devs drop in there too. And also on social media, you can find all the latest news and updates there as well. Eric, thank you so much. Now, before I let you go, I, I have to ask, mm -hmm. what did the ocean say to the pirate? Um, I don't know. Nothing. It just waved. Oh. <laughs> They're going to gonna cut my mic one. now, and actually, I really deserve that. So let me use my last moments here on the show to debut the newest trailer for Children of Morta. This game is an action RPG roguelite where you gradually meet and unlock more players of your, more members of your family as you play. It's kind of like Thanksgiving dinner, just without all the unnecessary political ramblings from my uncle Yuri at the end of the table. He knows what he said. We're proud to share an in-depth trailer now, revealing some never-before-seen characters and the date of this very anticipated, much buzzed about games, Xbox debut. Please enjoy Children of Morta. Children of Morta is an action RPG with a roguelite approach to character development, where you don't play a single character, but a whole extraordinary family of heroes. Hack and slash through hordes of enemies in procedurally generated dungeons, caves, and lands, and lead the family of Bergsons with all their flaws and virtues against the forthcoming corruption. Gameplay-wise, it's a unique mix of action-adventure RPG, roguelite, and hack and slash game. By leveling up, you develop not only individual characters, but also the entire family. There is no permadeath, and you can change family members between the dungeon runs. The story takes place in a distant land, but copes with themes and emotions common to all of us. Love and hope, longing and uncertainty, ultimately loss and sacrifice we are willing to make to save the ones we care for the most. Ultimately, it's about a family of heroes standing against the encroaching darkness. You can choose from six different family members, each one having unique skill sets. The father, John, a protective warrior with a sword and shield. The elder daughter, Linda, a precise archer. Kevin, a quiet fighter equipped with deadly daggers. Lucy, a lively and bold fire mage. Mark, a mindful martial arts fighter. And Joey, who smashes his enemies with a sledgehammer. Ranged attacks, magic spells, blocks, stuns, evasions, and passive skills. It's all there for you to discover, unlock, and upgrade. Check out different setups and find your preferred way of combat. In Children of Morta, there is no classical inventory system, but instead, there are dozens of items that you can randomly find on your way. They can give you passive buffs, modify your attacks, allow to spawn powerful totems, and more. And if you don't like what you find, you can always stop by a store and purchase stuff from a merchant. All the dungeons in the game are procedurally generated, which means their layout is different with each adventure. They can be from two to four levels of each dungeon, with a unique boss fight at the end. You can always get back the previous dungeons to get extra XP or finish all the side quests. There are three different lands to discover. Each one represents a different part of the Morda realm the Kaldi Caves, the city of Barahut, and the land of Terra Lava, each filled with unique enemies, bosses, and challenges linked directly to the environment around you. Play with your friend, or wife, or mom. It's a game about family, after all. 
Currently, the game supports local co-op for two players, but online co-op is in development and will be added for free in a future update. Gorgeous, hand-drawn, stylish pixel art. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, so just take a look and embrace it. The game costs $21.99 and will be available on Xbox One on October 15th. Be sure not to miss it. Ever since we announced Project xCloud, everyone has asked one question. When can I get my hands on it? Well, luckily we're joined by Project xCloud Corporate Vice President Kareem Chowdhury to provide some updates on that. Kareem, great to see you. You too, Larry. Always great to be with now, you. Now, I know you're not just coming by to say, hey, things are going pretty good. You got some really good news coming up, don't you? We do. All right, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. But first, can you bring people up to speed? What is Project xCloud? Project xCloud is our technology platform to stream console games from the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, we're incredibly excited about it. We've been working in really hard on turning our Xbox One console into a server version that we're deploying in Microsoft data centers around the world. Uh, we've been testing at home. We've been testing as employees. We've rolled it out to broader Microsoft. And now we're ready to take that next step where we invite the public to join our public preview. Now, you and I have been working at Xbox for a long time, worked on a lot of different projects, but this one, this Project xCloud is massive, isn't it? It is. You're taking all the fun and joy and complexity of a console, all the joy and complexity of a games, and we're putting it together, deploying it in the data centers uh, to be able to stream an experience to users wherever they are. Now, I hear you at home, you're saying, hey, you said there's going to be news. What is the news? Kareem? Let's get to it. What do you have to share with us today? Our public preview is starting in October, and we are opening our signups today. That is exciting news. Now, if you want to go to the signups, you just need to go to the URL on the screen, right? Exactly. And, then and we're going to be in three markets where we're starting, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Korea. Um, and we're going to be opening up the invitations. We're going to select people from who signs up. And we're going to start kind of small. And then we're just going to continually expand over time. Once folks get into the preview, what can they expect? Well, they can expect to play Xbox games Games in a way that they never have before um, on their mobile device. Um, you know, the original Xbox launched with Halo, mm -hmm. and so we're starting our public preview with Halo 5 Guardians. Great news. Uh, a title that I've loved and enjoyed. It's been great playing it on a phone. Uh, and we're going to have three other titles from our first party studios in the preview as well. Gears 5, the brand new uh, title that just shipped from The Coalition, having an awesome time playing Campaign and Horde. Uh, we're gonna put Sea of Thieves in there as well. I personally have been having a blast playing on my Project X Cloud next to my kids on the couch while they're playing on our Xbox One X. Um, and then a phenomenal fighting game I know Rikari will like, uh, Killer Instinct. Yeah, well, I mean, this is really exciting. I've, I've, been, I've had the chance to participate internally in, your, in our internal beta for quite some time and being able to play on the road. And I wanna be very clear you know, if you're playing something on your console, when you get into the program, it's just going to pick up your achievements, your save game, all of that just, just goes with you. Exactly. We are not creating a separate ecosystem. So it's your account, it's your save game, your friends list, your multiplayer, your progression, your gaming history. It all flows between the two. So you can start Gears 5 on your console, and then you can pick up and play it on Project X Cloud and vice versa. It's really up to you. I can hear people at home smashing that URL right now to get in on it, but what do they need to, for in terms of hardware to participate? You need an Xbox One controller with a Bluetooth connection and an Android phone or tablet. We are starting on Android. And in terms of networking, uh, we are going to work over Wi-Fi and a cellular connection. Now, I want to double click on cellular just a little <laughs> bit. Let's talk about uh, that. You're going to work with any mobile provider that you have in the three regions that we listed. We are working especially close with, you know, through technical partnerships with T-Mobile in the United States, Vodafone in the UK, and SK Telecom in Korea to make sure that we have a phenomenal experience for the customers. I want to talk about uh, Project X Cloud is one part of Xbox game streaming. There's also another part called console streaming. Now, for those folks that can't puzzle it themselves, tell us, tell us what that means. What is the difference? Right. Project X Cloud is our technology to stream games from our cloud. Mm -hmm. Uh, streaming from your home console is really just that. You have a console in your home that you paid for with games that you paid for. We're going to enable you to be able to stream those games to your mobile device as well while you're on the go. And we'll have more news to share about that at a future date. All right, so there you go. Kareem's got the news for you. We're going to be doing, rolling out the uh, preview for Project X Cloud in uh, next month. Mm -hmm. Next month, and they participate, they just go to the URL 
on the screen to sign up and hopefully they can join us. Yeah, it's been an incredibly exciting time because I've watched people both on my team and within Microsoft get to enjoy games on Project X Cloud, and the stories that they've been able to share have really been inspiring. So I'm excited to invite the public in. We're going to expand over time. We're going to make it better every single week based upon feedback. Um, and I want people to you know join us, have fun, play, and share their Project X Cloud stories. Join us on the journey. Mm -hmm. Kareem, thank you so much for today and sharing the vision on how we're expanding the way players can enjoy their favorite Xbox games. Once more, head to xbox.com forward slash game streaming if you, if you would like to express interest in participating in the Project xCloud preview. And that's what we're all about here at Xbox, giving you the options to enjoy your favorite games however you want. And of course, a huge part of that is Xbox Game Pass. Kate Mercari, what do you have for us about that? Well, thank you, Larry, for asking. And we've got plenty of games to make sure you don't lose that healthy TV tan. We just all want you to glow. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at all the games coming to PC and console through Xbox Game Pass. That's right, coming up very soon, like in about two minutes soon, we'll have a fresh batch of new games coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC. But first, we just released a gang of new games on Xbox Game Pass for console. Now, if you like seeing dudes with spiky hair scream a lot and punch each other. That's just like Goku here, right? Too true, Artan, which is why we've added Jump Force to Xbox Game Pass for console. Now, if you're already a member, you can download the game faster than Goku charges a spirit bomb. It does take a while. Now, we've also added Bloodstained Ritual of the Night and Lego Worlds, both available right now to download and play on Xbox Game Pass for console. Oh yeah, awesome game, high five! You know what, we could not. Now Xbox is out here providing you with, let's be honest, more games than you will ever have time to play because being an adult is tough. It's our personal mission to make sure that backlog never disappears and we're just getting started. On that note, let's check out what's coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for PC. Xbox Game Pass for PC is already home to amazing titles like Gears 5, Blair Witch, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, and Kingdom Come Deliverance, but we're just getting started. Here's a few of the titles coming to the service over the next few weeks. Fall is in the air, so put on that scarf and get ready to defend yourself from some pumpkin spice pillaging. In Bad North, you must defend adorable little villages from marauding Vikings, because let's be honest, marauding is just what Vikings do. Are you bored of racing games that offer humane levels of challenge? Do you want to restart every time you slightly miss a turn? Or even think about missing a turn? Then check out Dirt Rally 2.0. Seriously, it's so tough, we gotta do it. We just have to. It might just be the dark souls of racing games. City Skylines is an urban planning sim that lets you cultivate the thriving utopia you wished you really lived in. Which is to say, yes, you can put your house on the same block as a Taco Bell. Enjoy this blast from the past, and we mean that very literally, since Saints Row 4, re-elected, has a dubstep gun. Yeah, remember when people like dubstep? That's just the tip of the ridiculous iceberg in a game where you, the President of the United States, are trapped in a simulation by aliens and must fight your way out. It's kinda like the Matrix, but with dubstep. You know, I didn't really think I'd be saying that out loud today. Whether you're balancing the municipal books or presidentially punching aliens to dubstep, Xbox Game Pass for PC is dedicated to bringing you a variety of quality games. Make sure to check out the Xbox Beta app on September 26th for the next wave of games, and keep an eye on Xbox Wire and Xbox Game Pass PC on Twitter for up-to-date information. Look, we told you we weren't kidding when we said we were just getting started with Xbox Game Pass. Not only are we adding new games to the Game Pass all the time, but we're also making improvements to the app itself. We've got an Xbox beta app update coming out in early October that includes UI enhancements to make it faster to browse your library. Which I take it to mean the whole app is been replaced by a giant button that just says play Bloodstained Ritual of the Night right now. And we're also bringing a whole new group of indie games to the service through ID at Xbox. And a third episode of ID at Xbox Game Pass is in the works, and the team is really excited to share their latest news. That includes titles like Genesis Noir, a hard-boiled detective story that takes place during the Big Bang. That's right, <laughs> that Big Bang, the one that created our reality as we know it. You know, you couldn't have dames, whiskey, and jazz without the Big Bang, so it only makes sense, right? 
That is true, Ricari. There's also Lonely Mountains Downhill, a game that challenges you to race down a mountain without wrapping yourself around a tree, or a rock, or another tree, or even bigger rock. I think you get the idea. I do, I do. Now, if either of those games weren't esoteric enough for you, then perhaps we can tempt you with a cult pinball action in Demon's Tilt. This game combines bullet hell shoot 'em up chaos with pinball action and a generous slather of pentagrams. It's hard to describe a better Friday night, if I'm being honest. Pentagrams, yes, that's my Friday night. A generous slather itself. These are just a fraction of the amazing indie titles that the ID at Xbox team cannot wait to show you with more games to come from publishers like Team 17, Data Like Entertainment, Devolver Digital, and much, much more. To see the full slate of indie games and get a special behind the scenes look at their development, check out the ID at Xbox Game Pass Fall 2019 Showcase on the Xbox YouTube channel on September 26th at 9 a.m. Pacific. Now listen, if Occult Pinball is just the tease, you know the full reveal is gonna be good, so make sure to check it out. The ID at Xbox Showcase may be a few days away, but you'll only have to wait a few minutes to see all the other amazing games we're featuring today. So keep watching for an exclusive interview with the Outer World senior narrative designer, an in-depth look at John Bernthal's role in Ghost Recon Breakpoint, ooh, and a romantic comedy slash puzzle game about death. It's the person, not the concept, just to be clear. Apparently death really likes to dance. Who knew? Well, you will, as long as you keep watching. But first, Jeff, uh, you have a new Code Vein trailer for us, right? I do, and uh, you could call him Bloodstained, by the way. It's a fantastic game. They're playing it all weekend long. Now, we've got an exclusive look at a new enemy from the upcoming Souls-like Code Vein. Now, if you're not familiar, Code Vein takes place in a post-apocalyptic dystopia, is there any other kind, where anime vampires fight each other over dwindling blood supplies. We thought there were no more original ideas in this world. Code Vein launches on September 27th, so enjoy your first look at this enemy, the Cannoneer. Oh my God, Code Vein, like blood, vampires. I just, I just got that. Welcome. And now we take you from vampires to a game featuring enemies that would rather suck your wallet dry. It's the hyper-capitalistic, spacefaring RPG, The Outer Worlds. We've got Obsidian senior narrative designer Megan Starks on hand to walk Kate and Rakari through the finer points of the game. But first, for those of you who aren't familiar with the game, here's a deep dive in to The Outer Worlds. <laughs> Do you dream of working on the frontier of space? Are you searching for exciting off-world opportunities? Can you pass a basic aptitude test? Then come to Halcyon, where prosperity awaits you in the stars. Owned and operated by Earth's most distinguished corporations, Halcyon's colonists are guaranteed full employment. Enjoy a productive life in one of our many employment communities across Terra 2. You'll have access to every modern amenity, from gourmet dining to guaranteed housing and company-approved social clubs. <coughs> you never know what you'll find on Terra 2. Hungry for adventure? Apply for a post on Monarch instead. Gently terraformed and pristine, Monarch is an alien world just waiting to be tamed. Enjoy the outdoors, hunt local wildlife, and bring civilization to wild places. Some restrictions apply. Monarch is currently undergoing renovations. See your local board representative for details. Yes, our colony has a place for everyone. Are you a brilliant scientist? Um... Or do you prefer working with your hands? <laughs> Have you been rejected from every other colonist program? What the fuck? Not to worry. 
Halcyon accepts the lowest aptitude scores of any Earth Directorate colony. Improve yourself through our career development program. Sharpen your reflexes. Strengthen your muscles. Practice your social skills. Thank you for considering me for your ship crew and or outlaw gang. Injured on the job? Don't worry. Our board certified insurance program covers a wide range of conditions like robophobia, permanent concussions, and fear of heights. The board cares about your security. That's why all of Halcyon's workers have the means to defend themselves. We've got pointy weapons, smashy weapons, brainy weapons, and shooty weapons. From Spacer's Choice to Hammersmith, your local grocer carries it all. Ammo sold separately. Come join our corporate family. You won't find a warmer. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. Friendlier. Or harder working community of employees anywhere in the universe. So don't wait. Sign those indenturement contracts and get on board the next ship bound for the outer worlds. Hello? The Halcyon Colony, a better home for better people. Today we are joined by this lovely lady to my right, not this guy over here, senior narrative designer Megan Starks. Hi. You're going to talk to us more about Outer Worlds. We're so excited to have you here today, and I'm going to go there. Give us the planetary view. Oh, don't <laughs> I did it, and uh, I do it again. Puns are Planet welcome. You know it's what I'm totally saying? Fine. Like, come on, it's Outer Worlds. Give us the planetary view. What, what does it look like? What is the game? Like? Okay, high level overview. Um, the Outer Worlds is a new sci-fi single-player RPG um, from the creators of the original Fallout franchise, Tim Kane and Leonard Boyarsky, and Obsidian Entertainment, who made Fallout New Vegas. <laughs> so with this coming from the same developers that gave us Fallout New Vegas, what does that mean in terms of gameplay? Are we going to see... Yeah, familiar worlds in a sense, or gameplay. Like, yeah, take us through what we need to know. Yeah, I would say if you like that game, you'll definitely enjoy this one. It's very similar because some of the team who made that game were also working on uh, this game, mm -hmm. and uh, we did use it as to touchstone a little bit. But basically, it's like everything you would expect from a classic Obsidian RPG. Um, it's uh, story driven or player story driven, basically. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the choices that you want to make impact the world, um, the way you want to role play in the game, uh, all the different stuff that you want to do. And we also provide different uh, play styles for each quest. So it's like, do you want to talk your way through? Do you want to do full on combat? Or do you want to sneak um, and do a stealth playthrough? What, but what if I want to run and gun? I can do that too, Yeah, you right? can totally do that. Um, <laughs> yeah. I know, That's my like, play style. Look, you said whatever play like, style like, I oh, want. If you get me started, I just won't stop. But <laughs> well, that way would explain why you're the senior narrative designer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, basically, it's like we have different. Like, do you want to do crit path? Do you want to do side quest missions? Um, and then also, the NPCs will offer you like different types of quests, and you can decide which ones you want to do and how you want to play them out. Which factions you want to side with? Um, pit people against each other in different areas, yeah. Nice, okay, so let's talk skills, because we obviously have the typical strength skills, speed skills, but talk to us about the leadership skills, Yeah, because that's something that we can uh, use in this game. Yeah, that's something that brand works. new that we wanted to add in, um, because we're all about the different types of play styles, like I mentioned. Um, one of them is companion-based, which is, do you want to do your leadership skill? It makes you a more effective leader for your crew mm -hmm. of companions that you can optionally recruit in the game. Um, they will like interject in conversations. They have opinions about the world, um, but also it makes them <laughs> more effective in combat. <laughs> I do have a follow-up to this, which uh -huh. means, if does this mean that I could 
hypothetically have an army of my own minions to go about and do my business because I've honestly been needing that for quite some time. <laughs> well, a very small army, but yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Or it's fine. Yeah. Companions. Yeah. I mean, they do, you have like companion abilities. So you can tell them, like, I think people have seen Felix's drop kick where you're like, you know, go kick this old lady or <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> um, and then you also have, I mean, sometimes I do that. You said it's okay. play the way that you want to play. So. <laughs> I mean, I see judgment here. Yeah. Is all I'm, I'm, saying. I'm just saying it might, it might have happened in one of my playthroughs. I I feel a little bad about it. Uh, but then we also have different perks. You can spec out their abilities. You know their skills, however you'd like. So we talked perks, abilities, skills, and whatnot. I want to talk weapons, because mm. I saw some crazy stuff. And I'm going to have to reference the card here, because I know there's a shrink ray, but a mandibular rearranger. So yeah, take me through, take me through those Okay, two so we do here. have different science weapons that you can find in the game. One of the play styles we wanted to support is the whole mad scientist. Um, we have a lot of research and development. Um, different cool things that you can come across. And if you find them, um, one of them is the Shrink Ray and the Mandibular Rearranger. We do have others that you can find, but you'll have to play the game to get a hold of them. Mm. Um, the Shrink Ray obviously like shrinks down your enemies, so they're e weaker and easier to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and, the mandibular, <laughs> yeah, and the Mandibular Rearranger is like arranges your facial features, so you might get like a giant nose and a tiny head and stuff like that. So little, it's pretty funny. Little weaponized yeah. Picasso. Yeah, we're always <laughs> trying to add in the humor <laughs> in every aspect of the game so yeah well Megan thank you so much for bringing us through the wonders of science oh, and letting me say Pablo Picasso on this show because <laughs> I think that hasn't happened enough and thank you so much for being here oh, thank you. Outer World. yeah right on obviously the game looks incredible and I cannot wait to shrink some heads and Pablo Picasso the H out of some peeps all right it's gonna happen it's absolutely 100 percent, especially on Xbox Game Pass <laughs> Boom! Okay. We'll stick right here because we got so many more wonders and delights coming on Inside Xbox. Speaking of which, we've got a peek at the latest Hitman 2 expansion in addition to a discussion with the developers of After Party, a game where you have to, get this, out drink Satan to escape hell itself. It's called a Tuesday, Ricari. But first, it's time to introduce you, introduce you, all of you, to the wonders of very large men. Jeff? I, oh, we're, we're talking about very large men. What's going on with Gears 5? <laughs> I'll, I'll chop liver. I'll be honest, the, the sweatshirt and the large. suit, they're doing most of the lifting here in terms of sure, size. Sure, sure. Yes. Well, you, you do look swole. Th thank you. Yeah. We, we requested this desk just basically to hold it us shows. up. It shows. Well, unlike my body mass, Gears 5 has been growing and growing. Over 3 million players revved up their Lancers in the game's opening weekend. And all those players can look forward to a ton more content, can't they, Larry? What type of content? Well, over the next six months, the folks at the Coalition are going to add four new characters, new versus maps, new modes, new escape hives, and over 400 customization items. Is that right? Four, 400. That's what they're telling us. That's what it said. All right, I trust you. 400 okay. it is. But wait! There's even more. Okay. We wanted to remind you guys that you can unlock Batista just by playing Gears 5, but listen to me. You have to play it before October 28th. We're not asking too much of you here. Once the window's closed, the character goes back into the vault. And we had lost that combination long ago. So it, it's a really good game, and you know, that's that, that's a bonus. And yeah. speaking of bonuses, did you know yes. you get seven days of Xbox Game Pass with, with what? How? Every, especially Mark Han of Rockstar Energy Drink. And Ooh. By golly, what a coincidence. It just so happens that Gears 5 is on Xbox Game Pass. All right, so if you don't have the game already, you can get access to it for seven days, unlock Batista, get a nice caffeine buzz it's going. It's touring, actually. And on top of that, you get this lovely recyclable collector. 100% recyclable. This design is actually from UK-based illustrator Luke Priest, who has done work for Marvel, Lucasfilm, and Metallica. So I'm thinking uh, he's probably perfect for uh, making you know art uh, about a game that has chainsaw guns in, in space. Yes, and if you like the designs, and frankly, who doesn't? You can grab a seven pack of 4K wallpapers, get all those numbers, from the Microsoft, 4, Microsoft Store, absolutely free. All right, Larry, uh, you got some more hardware goodies. Oh. Uh, back here. Don't I? Take a, take a look at that. Mm, but, but wait, we're not done. No gloves? Here you go. Okay. I got some brand new bundles. No, I forgot the gloves today. And I mean, these bundles are so new, they're shipping today. All right, be careful. We're going to have to put them in the truck. We've got a brand new Xbox One S and Xbox One X bundle that each includes a full download of the award-winning Forza Horizon 4 and the very excellent LEGO Speed Championship expansion. And for those of you that already have an Xbox, Forza Horizon 4 is available on Xbox Game Pass. Bit of a, you know, trend here happening. Yep. Chances are you've had at least one friend tell you how good Forza Horizon 4. It's good. And it was you in this case, and yeah. you were not lying. If you haven't played it yet, go out and grab one of these bundles 
right now. Take that one. And hey, speaking of Minecraft, we, we weren't speaking about we Minecraft. Are now. Okay. Minecraft, Minecon Live is just around the corner. Let's take a quick look at what you can expect from this year's virtual event. I, I really just don't want the audience to miss that Minecon Live will stream on September 28th at noon, Eastern US time. Or whatever time that is in whatever country or whatever time zone you are in. You can watch Minecon live from anywhere in the world. The live event kicks off this Saturday, September 28th at 12 noon Eastern. That is 9 a.m. here in the Pacific time zone. And for Graham, it's 4 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, actually, uh, the UK is on British summertime right now, so oh. that would be 5 p.m. And we certainly couldn't forget all of our viewers in lovely Adelaide, Australia. Yes, we are looking forward to seeing you bright and early on Australian Central Standard Time, which is 1.30 a.m. on September 29th. That's a real time zone, actually, and I think that's probably all of them. There's only five time zones? All right, well, here we go. Make sure to follow Minecraft's Mixer, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch channels to catch all the news, content creators, and those announcements. Yeah, and since Minecraft is truly the world's game, take that, soccer. Yeah. We'll have creators from all around the world streaming the event in 10 different languages. Mm, c'est si bon. Oui, oui, oui. You can find more info about those creators and more at minecraft.net forward slash minecon. And now we whisk you from being the master of your own Minecraft server to being the master of your own nation. We're talking about Tropico 6. It is currently in Xbox game preview, and then it will officially release as a 1.0 on September 27th. That's coming up in just a couple days, giving you the opportunity to become El Presidente, the world's greatest dictator. You can raid foreign lands, steal their wonders. You can customize your palace. Deliver moving election speeches. Please take your shoe off the counter, Larry. And most importantly, you can grow a much bigger beard than either of us. I think anybody can. But even with the bushiest of beards won't make you a great dictator if you weren't always looking for some angle to just save a little bit of money. Well, we've got you covered there. That is correct. For the next few days, you can get the special early bird price if you buy Tropico 6 while it is still in Xbox game preview. Mm -hmm. Then when the game officially launches, again, just a couple of days, September 27th, it'll update to the final official release. See, that's the kind of savvy business dealing that befits a great dictator Not sure with a thin beard. Me. Very thin beard. <laughs> if only we could uh, do a little bit more for that. All right, I guess we have something to look forward to for the next show. I do expect to see, uh, I think people would like to see at XO Major Nelson with the beard. Yeah, no. Right? No? So. People don't care. Okay. okay, well, we may not have those bushy beards just yet, but we do have grizzled stubble working on that, courtesy of John Bernthal and Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Kate, take us to Tough Guy Town. Jeff and Larry, words cannot convey how delighted I truly am to do just that. John Bernthal is hot. It's true. And if, like me, You've been waiting to crawl around in mud and talk in a gravelly voice, and you'll be able to do very soon with this beta announcement from Ghost Recon Breakpoint. It's only by working as a team that you can rise. Hello, Ghosts and Xbox fans. I'm John Bernthal. I play Cole Walker in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. We're putting the finishing touches on Aurora, so feel free to download the beta from September 26th to September 29th. Hope you enjoy. See you there, ghosts. 
And you will see me there, John Bernthal. You can pre-order the beta right now. So preload the beta, excuse me. It's ready to go on September 26th. Now, I live life by one very simple life rule, and it is do whatever Mr. Bernthal tells me to, which is why I'm especially excited to see what's coming next. John Bernthal portrays the game's villain. Wanted to share some of his approach with everyone here, so please enjoy this punishing look at Breakpoint's Cole Walker. Do you get it? Does he play the Punisher? Do you get it? I'm a wolf. Raised to be the Alpha. But trying to follow. Alas, the beast can't be tamed that easily. Uh, Cole Walker, he's grown deeply disillusioned with the uh, sort of state of affairs uh, with the ghosts. He thinks that their moral compass and their set of rules are holding them back and keeping them from uh, attaining the mission at hand. I think he develops this uh, new code that's uh, born out of his frustration, born out of his anger, born out of his uh, the pain for uh, the loss of the men that have, have died uh, under his watch. And I think what he thinks is because of these these rules so he's uh, developed this new philosophy and he's got this new band of soldiers that are behind him and uh, look I know uh, he's looked at as the antagonist of the game but you know it's it's my job not to judge him it's my job to, to, to empathize with him and believe in him You know, with Emil being on set the entire time, you know, he's Green Beret. This project from the beginning had a, um, a real dedication towards authenticity. He had a really specific sort of um, way that, not just how Cole moved and uh, handled his weapon and, and protocol, but but also for mindset. And I think that's really what's, what's, what's kind of most important. And I think any time you um, get the honor of portraying a vet, uh, it's, uh, it's a huge responsibility. You know, this kind of process with mocap is, you have to have one flawless take. There's no place to hide. There's cameras everywhere. Um, I come from the theater, so I really dig that. You rehearse it till you get it perfect. I think it just brings everybody's game up, and I, I really enjoyed that part of the process. I was really humbled by how much this game means to the people that are making it. I knew from the second I got there just how important this was to them. It was no different from, you know, a great television show, a great movie. When you're following a filmmaker and you're following a group of artists who are absolutely committed to doing their best, that's that's what drives me 100%. By tooth and claw, I took this island. And by tooth and claw, I will rule it. Now we've still got plenty of awesome games coming up for you guys, including a look at Daisy's new Livonia expansion, a pub crawl through hell and after party, and advance info on XO19. But first, we know you haven't gotten your fill of bald badasses, so here's some news from everyone's favorite assassin, party clown, sports mascot, whatever you want to call him, it's Agent 47. The next and final expansion for Hitman 2 takes Agent 47 to Haven Island, a tropical paradise in the Maldives. For those following the expansions thus far, Haven Island takes place just after the events of the last New York expansion. And we'll probably let you bash someone over the head with a coconut if I had to guess. What's more exciting than that? Maybe this. Haven Island is available today for expansion pass and gold edition owners. Check out this intro to the expansion and enjoy the high life. So, this is paradise. If you can afford. Gentlemen, glad to hear you made it out of New York. Where are we? Olivia decrypted the Data 47 recovered from the bank. We isolated three transactions from Providence partner accounts. All made out to Haven, a small corporation operating out of the Maldives. And what does Haven do? To the public, they specialize in reputation management for the rich and famous. The real money, however, comes from the covert reconstruction of identities for wealthy criminals. They make people disappear. The partners are using Haven to acquire new identities. Yes, 
Olivia's been attempting to hack the Haven servers, but the owners of Haven are manually resetting the access keys every 10 hours. That, unfortunately, makes them targets. Haven Island is a true tropical paradise. Owned by the company's founder, Tyson Williams, the island is used by Haven as a combined headquarters and client entertainment center. Current and potential clients are ferried to the island and treated to the very best the Maldives have to offer. Michelin star chefs, a full massage spa, private huts, exercise facilities, and all the comforts of a luxury island resort are made available to them. We'll be sending you in as a potential new client. We've put together a convincing cover story. You're Mr. Reaper, a thief for hire looking to disappear for a while. Your mission on the island is simple. You need to eliminate the three owners of Haven. Tyson Williams, founder and rumored tyrannical CEO of Haven. Ludmilla Vitrova, a former confidence artist hired by Williams to serve as a client recruiter and handler. And Stephen Bradley, technical wizard and the brains behind Haven's proprietary software platform. With the owners gone, Olivia will be able to penetrate the Haven servers long enough for her to secure the new partner identities. I've uploaded all the information we have on the island and the three targets. Best of luck, gentlemen. Hmm. I don't rely on luck. Well, a little wouldn't hurt. Nothing beats seeing a joyless Asian 47 in a tropical paradise, right? Completely dressed for it. But when it comes to sheer quirk, the developers behind Felix the Reaper might have 47 beat. If you're unfamiliar, Felix the Reaper is a romantic comedy about, this, about the ro most romantic and comedic guy around. Who's that? Death. Felix the Reaper comes to us from developer Kong Orange, and as you might expect, the game that is bringing you such a heartfelt story is a little offbeat. But they're awfully friendly. They actually produce their own behind the scenes mini doc as a way to say hi, so let's take a look. Death is dancing on some historical images. And that seemed so much fun that we thought there's some kind of game hidden in here. It's funny to look at and it, and it, it immediately says, make a game about me. He draws how stuff is supposed to look. Felix the Reaper is a shadow manipulation puzzle. It's in 3D, but at the core of the whole thing, it's about making people die. Once you've figured out how to manipulate the shadows, you solve little adventure plots that will eventually lead up to a person dying, like they're supposed to in the plans of the Ministry of Death. sculpt stuff. When you meet Felix the first time in the game, you almost immediately find out that he likes to dance. He's been practicing that for a while, and, and it turns out he, he hopes to one day be able to run into Betty the Maiden and ask her to dance. So it's, it's sort of his master plan. It looks really nice when, when a chubby guy like him dances the way he does. It, it sort of has this uh, inherent comedy to it that is both relatable. You don't laugh at him, you're, you're kind of feeling joy with him. He 
codes so you don't have to. In Felix, we work with dancers and musicians and uh, historians. And when we get inspired from all their talent and all their skill, it feels like we can make a deeper game where the entertaining aspect uh, has more impact because it has the weight of all this skill and talent in these people. Things get sound because of him. In a sense, this is taking death more serious. We actually sort of cherish each person dying in this game because there's a lot of build-up and humor around it more than just having it be some sort of mechanic where people have to die for you to move on. Even if that is what we do, we spend a lot of time making sure people die. Oh man, <laughs> October 17th, here we go. Leave it to video games, make death seem like a fun guy. Now y'all be able to play Felix the Reaper day and date on Xbox Game Pass. That's October 17th. And now, are you serious? I have to segue out of death? Challenge accepted. Now we're taking you from six feet under to a mile high. Yes, nailed it. The fourth DLC for Ace Combat 7 adds a whole new mission in which you have to capture an advanced submarine codenamed Alicord. The new DLC adds some new game mechanics, including an electronic support area that helps you lock onto enemies super quickly, and electronic countermeasure areas that will do the exact opposite. So pilots, it's time to sortie for Operation Sighthound, beginning tomorrow on Xbox. It's a requiem. Set off as soon as we're ready. Our objective is to capture an advanced submarine and harbor at Artiglio. The sub's force projection capabilities are equivalent to a carrier strike group. A real monster if there ever was one. Down quite a few, but haven't even made a dent. Retreat not authorized. I mean, our hot shots won't even last five minutes. This boat has the means to end this hideous war in a definitive and elegant manner. What is his goal? I see three strikes. Get him. <laughs> I'm gonna screw you up so bad. As of now, this boat no longer belongs to the Erusian military. That monster will roam the ocean. The world shall be horrified by the number of lives we will take. Milo, how long have we been friends? Our entire lives. Our whole entire lives. And so I want you to understand that I'm not blaming you for getting us killed and sent to hell. Two, uh, what do you want? Two dead orphans. And I'm not even saying how drinking Satan to get back home is the worst idea you've ever had. Okay, well, Lola, what are you saying? Just saying, you should pace yourself. Uh, Lola, can you get alcohol poisoning in hell? It feels kind of wrong to do this interview without a drink in my hand, but I will try my hardest. And I am joined by the also sober I think Night School Studio Director Sean Crankle to talk about After Party. Hey, Sean. How's thanks it for going? joining us. Thanks for having me. It's really good to see you. We just saw this trailer for After Party. Uh, so, why don't you tell us what After Party is all about? 
Yeah, if you couldn't tell from the trailer, uh, it is about two best friends who have just died after graduating college, which sounds like a pretty awful situation. Mm -hmm. But uh, fortunately, as they are in line in hell about to get processed and figure out their eternal hell, uh, it turns out that there's a loophole. And if you can get invited to Satan's after party, or sorry, his nightly party, uh, you can actually outdrink Satan and he will grant you re-entry to Earth. Nobody's ever done it before, so that's what the game is about, is this, these two best friends sort of exploring the underworld on this crazy pub crawl through hell. I'm just committing that to memory, you know, in case anything <laughs> happens you yeah. know, down the line. It, that may come in handy just later. In so I want to rewind things a couple years back to your previous game, to Night School's previous game, Oxifree, came out in 2016. Immediately ended up on a lot of the 10 best lists of the year, including mine. I know you read my, my live journal. I do. Where, where I, it did make it in there. Uh, and the game is available on Xbox Game Pass. And between now and release, please download Oxenfree, play it. I've never seen a game that handles conversation better than that. Um, but the tone here is a, a little bit different. That game, sort of a realistic setting where like fantasy and paranormal things happen, it's turned on its head for After Party. Big time, yeah. I mean, for us, I think after completing Oxenfree, which was a pretty serious game um, set in a setting that felt quite familiar, uh, we wanted to flip that and go, let's be really fun and do a ton of world building. And instead of having a cast of only you know two or three characters, why don't we look at a cast full of this one has over 200? Um, so it really, you know, I think for us it was important to carry over the connective tissue of Oxenfree, which is the dialogue system and the ability to walk and communicate. But how do we amp that up? So it was really about now, you know, Milo and Lola going through this almost R-rated version of a Pixar movie. Um, and we created our own hell basically for that. Uh, Let, and let's them talk about it. that. Uh, I've, I've played the game at a GDC and I think at PAX and we've seen a number of trailers now. Yeah. Uh, this, is, this isn't your grandfather's hell. This is like, <laughs> hell looks kind of cool. I, I guess, like, so tell, tell us what went into that. Well, we wanted to start somewhere that was more fun than the usual pitchforks and, you know, heavy metal and orange and just blood, uh, which there's, you know, a fair amount of that in the game as well, but we wanted our hell to be more like a, a nightlife that you'd want to explore. So there's a whole host of different districts, you know, some that feel like Shibuya, some that feel like you're in Amsterdam, some are like New York, and they're all connected through the River Styx. And so we've got, you know, our demons are people that are working all day torturing people, but at night they got to go out, they got to go drink, they got to go kind of let their hair down. And the humans that are getting tortured also actually coexist with these other demons. And so like our hell is sort of this mix of all religions. We basically treat like every afterlife from every religion as if it were correct. And so we've co combined that into our own, uh, you know, strange version of the underworld. Hence some of the loopholes apparently. Yes, <laughs> yes. So uh, let's talk about uh, drinking and let's talk about let's. like how that actually works in the game and how it affects what is happening and, and what you're doing. So yeah, drinking and partying in general in the game is such a crucial theme. And so early on, we're like, let's let's prototype all these various types of drinking. We had pee meters and we had you blacking out. None of these things were fun. So we were like, how do we hone in on the fun aspects of it? <laughs> there were pee meters, there were people puking. It was, it was a mess. Uh, but we veered much more into this territory of like, maybe drinks can feel like a potion, almost like a Harry Potter thing that will sort of amplify the communication style. So in Oxenfree, the script was much more about just like there's three options that the player can say and that's it and that's how you progress through the game. But in this, if you're in a, any bar, there's five or six different drinks and each drink can change your personality and that will change the entire script. So if you wanna talk like a pirate, there's a drink for that. If you want to talk like a mobster, there's a drink for that. If you wanna be flirty, all these variety of drinks and, and concoctions then change how you interact with everybody inside of the game. And so that's not just a fun flavor thing, it's also a strategic thing. Like you might not wanna flirt with the giant evil demon you're playing beer pong against, or maybe you do, because maybe it'll throw them off. There, there were so many, there were so many different endings in Oxenfree with just those three solutions. I'm imagining like your narrative board is like Charlie from It's Always Sunny, where it's just like you it, know all these interconnected things. <laughs> I cannot wait to see just how many different, you know, how my adventure unfolds compared to you know somebody else's. Before you go, uh, again, play the game, heard a lot of trailers, and something that jumps out at me uh, is some really great voice talent. I, I feel like I, some people are familiar. Who are we going to be uh, conversing with? Yes, so um, our two leads are Janina Gavankar and Koi Dao. Janina, you know, she's, she was in Star Wars Battlefront, but yeah, she's also got this illustrious yeah. career, of course, in TV and film. Um, and then Koi is in a ton of different anime. He's also Detective Pikachu. Um, That's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah, he's great. So 
Um, the two of them, I just love seeing them interact because they're very similar to their characters. But, you know, in Oxen Free, we had a very limited cast. This having 200 characters means we have a massive cast. So we've got, uh, we were fortunate enough to have Dave Finoy as Satan, um, which Good cast. He did, he's just perfect. Uh, we, we actually brought back Erin Yvette, who was the lead in Oxenfree. She plays your personal demon in this, uh, named Sister Mary Wormhorn, who tortures you over the course of the game. Uh, you know, we have Ashley Birch, just a huge, massive cast of incredible talent. We're very fortunate. Suffice to, to say, not a lot of games out there like this, and it's something we'll all be looking forward to. So, Sean, thank you so much for coming by to talk After Party, and for teaching me that we're all going to need strong livers to survive the afterlife. And while Drinking may cure woes in the afterlife. It won't help me survive around in Daisy. But knowledge is power, so Rukari juices up with the latest on the Daisy expansion. All right, well, up next, we're excited to show you the next big expansion coming to Daisy. Livonia spans a massive 163 square kilometers and provides sunny summer terrain with lots of forest locations to help you reenact your favorite Ewok style ambushes. No joke. Start screaming Ewok stuff in your mic when you uh, jump out of some bushes, it totally will freeze people up. Usually I would uh, scream my favorite artist. I, you know, I prefer Carly Rae, but we won't go into that. All right, now in addition to the new map, this expansion adds lots of new content that can be used in Livonia in the main game, including, can't believe I'm gonna say this, a bear. Like a big, hairy, likes fish, leaping like an actual bear. I'm gonna stop making jokes before Reddit gets mad at me, but check out this trailer for Livonia coming to Day Z on November 13th. Now, before we get out of here, we wanted to give y'all an update on our next big event. That's right, XO19 takes place in London, November 14th through the 16th, and we could not be more excited. Yeah. We're more excited, Larry. <laughs> We're thrilled to celebrate with the UK with the entire team. That means gaming royalty will be there. Phil Spencer, Matt Booty, Xbox Game Studios, and so Major Nelson. So well, Major much. Nelson. Yeah, that's the gaming royalty I was right say, there. You're right there. Exactly. Now, we're already working on a ton of announcements for the show, not to mention just celebrating Xbox along with all of you, the fans. Well, if we're celebrating along with the fans, that means we got to get uh, all dressed up. Cosplay contest? Group cosplay what contest? Cosplaying, yeah. yeah, let's Hi, do it. I don't uh, know. We'll I, figure I it like out. Master uh -huh. Chief, <laughs> maybe. Short Master Chief. Speaking <laughs> of sweating through your clothes, last year's event in Mexico City was such a blast. L literally like a life event for us being up there on the stage, never felt anything like that. If we have one-tenth that much energy in London, this will be something to, re yeah. uh, to remember. I know you can bring it in London because tickets for our celebration go on sale October 1st, with all proceeds benefiting Special Effect, a nonprofit that does incredible work in the UK to help bring the joy of gaming to those with physical disabilities. All right, we want to see all of you there, so grab your tickets on October 1st at xbox.com slash x019. Yes, that's x0. You can say xo, but it's really Zero. You know, I think both will work on the website. Give it a try. All right. If you can't join us in <laughs> person, we'd still like you to join us digitally. Yay. That's right. Inside Xbox, we'll be back live from the event, November 14th, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. What time is that in London? Eight. Uh, okay. He's got it. 8 p.m. British summertime with all of the news, the reveals, and this feel-good scripted banter that you love from inside Xbox. And boy, does it feel so, so good. This will be our biggest episode of Inside Xbox yet. Let me you just say it. that one more okay. time. Biggest one yet. Absolutely packed with announcements. Plus, we'll have additional programming throughout the 15th and the 16th to celebrate all the big announcements from the show. And don't forget, if you want to toss your hat in the ring for Project X Cloud testing in October and beyond, head over to xbox.com forward slash game streaming. We're starting small in October, but we'll open up more spots for participants, add more games, and we'll keep you all of you updated on the progress. Biggest show ever. Uh, we're going to be held to it. So we'll see you on November 14th, live from XO19 in London. Now, from all of us here in sunny Seattle, thank you for watching today's episode of Inside Xbox. And we love the sun so much, we're going to London. So tip your servers. <laughs> Try the fish and chips, and we will see you at XO19. Bye-bye, everybody. Cheerio.